In this channel, I typically showcase large-scale extreme aerobatic planes and high-end jets. However, my passion for aviation extends to all types of aircraft, regardless of their size or cost. Recently, I've been intrigued by RC gliders. Many years ago, I used to fly full-scale gliders, and after witnessing Gernot Brookman's impressive demonstrations with his massive composite gliders, I decided to give it a try myself with something a bit more budget-friendly. Enter the FMS 2.3 meter Fox. On paper, this model is an affordable and simple way to get a taste of what aerobatic gliders are all about. Granted, this plane won't be as slippery and efficient as an expensive high-performance composite model, and won't be as graceful as those large airframes Brookman flies. But for 250 bucks, you get everything you need to get it in the air, with the exception of the receiver and the battery pack. Additionally, and as opposed to the full-scale Fox glider, this FMS model comes with a small electric engine, which removes the need of finding somebody to tow your plane. The assembly is pretty straightforward and the manual does a pretty good job explaining the process, so I will not bore you with that. The only thing to note here is that the included transmission linkages for the ailerons were a bit too short to get good geometry, and I ended up replacing them for some longer ones. I'm using a simple FreeSky Archer R6 receiver, and for battery pack, I went with a 2200 mAh 3-cell LiPo battery. Launching the Fox into the air is relatively simple, as long as you remember to keep your thumb on the elevator stick during the hand lands. Whoops. Yeah, don't do that. Good thing these things are tough. Alright, yeah, that's much better. Now, how does it fly? Once airborne, the Fox is very easy to fly at around 50% throttle. Despite the relatively contained size of this model, it actually feels very stable and can fly pretty slow. Flying this Fox is surprisingly fun and I enjoyed keeping the plane in close proximity. Turning radius can be as small as you want. There is plenty of elevator authority to do tight turns and loops. The elevator is surprisingly responsive, so make sure to put some exponential in there to make the plane more comfortable to fly precisely. With the center of gravity at around 50 mm behind the leading edge, inverted flight is as easy as upright flight. The Fox has enough aileron and rudder authority to also perform rolls, but make sure to start them with enough speed and altitude, as the roll rate is fairly slow. Apart from the obvious long wingspan contributing to this, the ailerons themselves have a lot of flex, which means that we don't get even deflection across their span and the roll rate suffers in flight. I would love to see this improved in future iterations. Something as simple as rotating the aileron carbon fiber strip 90 degrees would drastically improve this issue, as the current orientation negates any useful effect on this carbon piece on rigidity. The motor feels a bit underpowered to me, but again, I might not have the best references in terms of power to weight ratio. Jokes aside, it feels like it could use a bit more power to allow bigger loops and let the plane climb a bit more during maneuvers. Don't get me wrong, the motor won't keep you from doing most basic aerobatic maneuvers, but you will need to come with some speed and start the maneuvers with a bit of altitude buffer for a safe recovery. I have heard some reports of the ESC kicking back sometimes when suddenly applying full throttle. I haven't personally encountered this, but it's always a good idea to apply throttle smoothly and avoid potential issues. Despite regular motor used during my aerobatic flights, Flight times of around 10 minutes are easily achievable with ample battery to spare. The Fox is totally comfortable flying at very slow speeds without any dangerous tendencies. It feels pretty hard to get in trouble with it, really. If you bring the flaps down, you can really slow it down to a crawl. Generally, I only bring them down for landing. The landings are very slow and easy. Just remember to stop the motor before touch down to avoid striking the propeller against the ground. All in all, this is a fun plane if you are looking to try some glider action without breaking the bank, or if you simply want to try something a bit different from your usual flying style. Below, I've included some affiliate links where the channel receives a small kickback for any purchases you might make, in case you're interested. That's all for me on this one. I'll see you in the next video.